Welcome to Naturally Mendocino. My name is Keith Weiner, and I'm your host. Do you know what's in your food? As you may know, Prop 37 did not pass, but it does not mean the movement died. It's still alive and well. The FDA is planning to pass on April 26 a bill that will allow Aqua Bounty to provide genetically engineered salmon on your table. Will you be seeing salmon at the next salmon barbecue at, in Fort Bragg? We'll see. Alaskan fishermen are upset. Maybe the ones on the north coast will be too. Do you have fruit trees? Right. And are those trees, fruit trees being invaded by critters such as raccoons and possums? One of the common ways is to build a fence. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. We tried that, but they still got in. Next, we tried putting on some stovepipe to see if they would stop climbing up the trees. Uh, that didn't help either. Then we started experimenting with brambles, the stickering things. We found out that raccoons do not like to get their paws sticky. So we tried that, and it helped some, but now we have to wait and see what happens with the rest of them. The beautiful Mendocino Coast, a place for rest, recovery, and well-being, inner calm and contentment, complete relaxation, heal chronic pain and disease, stretch your breath and your body, fun, laughter, and joy, your body's natural cleansing, present in the moment, licensed professional therapists and healers, on the coast at Dragonfly Wellness Center, one mile south of Highway 20 on Highway 1. 707-962-0890 www.dragonflywellness.org Susan was, bo was born and raised in the grassroots of Louisiana. She first dug her hands into the earth as a young child at Our Father's Garden, a church farm that provides fresh food for the hungry in Baton Rouge. Her adventures and service and solidarity eventually led to Mendocino County, where she co-founded the Noya Food Forest, one of, the, one of the key partners of the North Coast opportunities on the Mendocino Coast. An avid server and dancer, Susan's true passion is collaborating with all kinds of people, and she's happily sinking her teeth into her new position as the Farm to Fork Coordinator at North Coast Opportunities. Is there anything you'd like to add to this? Um, well, thank you for having me here today. Um, and, oh my, I mean, there's so much that could be added, so <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hard to say, but I'm coming up on 10 years here in Mendocino County, and it's been a really incredible experience, and, you know, we talk about collaborating with all kinds of people. We certainly have all kinds of people around here. So I first kind of trickled down the coast from Humboldt County where I was going to school and landed in Albion of all places. And um, it was just me and my dog and my car and really no plan and no idea what I was up to. I was pretty young and trying to figure out what my next step was and landed here and just got embraced by this community. and everything's kind of blossomed from from there and so I just really feel grateful to Mendocino County for capturing me and um, supporting me in my visions for what I wanted to do with my energy and my life and I feel like I've really kind of come to age by living here so it's really been an amazing last 10 years of life here in Mendocino County I'm really happy to be almost considered a local I'm not sure how many years it it takes to really <laughs> get keyed in in that way but I think I'm getting pretty close well, we're uh, grateful to have you here today, and uh, thank you for being here and, and part of our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a few questions for you. And uh, first one is, um, you're currently working with the North Coast Opportunities Project, which is based in Ukiah, but uh, it has an outreach throughout the county. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other projects you're working with, like Farm to Fork? Sure. So North Coast Opportunities is Mendocino County's Community Action Agency. Mm -hmm. So all counties throughout the U.S. have um, a designated agency that's responsible for developing programs that help develop community, alleviate poverty, and address different community issues. Mm -hmm. And so North Coast Opportunities has been doing that since the 1960s in Mendocino County. And NCO, as we're commonly known as, we're also the Community Action Agency for Lake County. 
So over the last 10 years or so, NCO has gotten really involved in local food issues, mm -hmm. in recognizing that food is really at the heart of so many things in our community and that it affects issues of health and economy and um, sustainability and energy and, um, you know, emergency preparedness. And there's just so many different areas that get linked in through the food system that impact our lives every day. And so NCO identified working on the local food system as a really good strategy for, um, you know, developing our community as a whole. And so over the last, you know, like I said, 10 years or so, NCO has developed a number of different projects and programs to um, really address, you know, how much food do we have here in our county? Are we able to feed ourselves? Is it healthy food? You know, do people have access to it? Mm -hmm. So that has come in many different forms from supporting the farmers markets and helping them to become more vibrant throughout the county. Um, so pulling in grant funding to do like marketing and promotion mm -hmm. at the farmers markets. Um, perhaps over the last couple of years, you've seen like chef demos at the farmers yeah. markets mm -hmm. or the food stamp match programs that have been happening at some of the farmers markets. Those have all been supported by NCO. So that's one of the ways in which we've been working in the food system. Um, and this latest project is um, the Farm to Fork project, and that's what I was hired to coordinate. And Farm to Fork is really about um, building the connections between local farmers and the institutions in our community that provide the bulk of the food needs for um, our citizens here in Mendocino County. So that's looking at the schools and grocery stores and restaurants um, and also hospitals and senior centers and those kinds of um, larger institutional feeders in our community. And um, you know, being that they are the largest purchasers of food in the community, it's a big market for local production and for local farmers. And so the goal of this project is to build that market and to help link in local farmers to be able to sell to those institutions. Um, so my primary role is in basically facilitating relationships between local growers and buyers um, and also kind of working out the logistics of how do you get food from the farm to the school, um, how do you incorporate it into school meals. So I've been working a lot with um, school food service in helping them to incorporate seasonal produce into their menus for the school breakfast and lunch programs and also helping them to get their kitchens equipped to be able to deal with more fresh produce. So that's in the form of like um, high-speed vegetable processing, um, you know, basically like super-powered Cuisinarts and um, sectionizers which help cut up fruit really quickly mm -hmm. and, um, and basically empowering the school food service staff to be able to incorporate more fresh local stuff into their meals program. So that's um, kind of the primary focus of my work but I've also been doing some work in helping farmers scale up so that they can meet that larger demand that's coming from restaurants. See when you're going to the farmers market you're able to have um, kind of whatever is available at that moment. Um, and so that's a, a certain approach to selling your food. When you're selling to a restaurant or a grocery store or other places that have like a continual need that they need to fill um, weekly, it's more consistent and you know they know what their quantities are, mm -hmm. you've got to plan accordingly. And it's a different type of planning, production planning essentially. So um, I've been working with farmers to be able to scale up to meet that institutional demand. So it's really fun work. I've really enjoyed it. And there's so many different areas um, that it's led me into food safety concerns, which has become really a big issue across the United States um, and is affecting our producers here locally, um, to you know, learning a lot about the school meal program and all the regulations that are involved in that, the, you know, the budgets that the school food service staff have to work within and all of the regulations on them and which is what a huge challenge it is to serve meals every day in schools, um, to learning about distribution and logistics of ordering and delivery. There's so many different facets of this work. It's really quite interesting. So I love my job. I've been in it about a year now 
and um, this grant will end at the end of September, so I'm looking forward to the next phase of, um, of my career, which inevitably will have to do with working with farmers, because that's what I've been doing for a long time now, and I'm really enjoying it. Well, it sounds like you're doing quite a bit, and the whole community, as well as the county, is really benefiting from the work you're doing. And um, you're also involved with the Food Policy Council for Mendocino County. Uh, what is that, and what does it do? So, um, you know, across the United States, communities are looking at this issue of local food systems and how to um, revive them. You know, back in the day, we had local food systems. That's all you had. And it's really been over the last 50 years that the industrial agriculture has really taken over. And it's an incredibly productive and efficient system that trucks food all across the nation, but it's also, you know, very wasteful and um, has, you know, negative impacts on so many different levels of our lives and on the environment. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at how do we bring it back home, you know, and how do we develop regional and local food systems that are more resilient and healthy and, um, you know, address our local needs. And you know, through a number of years of this kind of organizing happening around the country, people realize the need to have some kind of like organized or coordinated body in those localities and in those regions to be able to um, communicate effectively and to have each other's work collaborative and working together and coordinated in some way. And so this idea of a food policy council um, came to be. And so we decided, as we saw this happening in other areas, that Mendocino County really needed something like that because we had various efforts happening throughout Mendocino County from the work that the Anderson Valley Food Shed had been doing over in Anderson Valley and Boonville area, um, and then things happening here on the Mendocino Coast, other things happening in Covalo, but all of this being interrelated because particularly with our different microclimates that we have, um, and the demographics of our county, how we're so spread out, um, you know, it's really important for us to be working together because we're able to grow some things on the coast that are not available inland in the heat of August or July. You know, there's no mm -hmm. lettuce and chard and, car and kale growing in those areas during those months, whereas the coast can provide those things throughout the year. Um, but the coast has a lot of the buyers in the restaurants and grocery stores that the inland corridor does not have and where a lot of the producers are. So you know, there's a lot of coordination and connecting that needs to happen around the county. And, um, you know, for a long time here in Mendocino County, us out here on the coast have felt a little bit like the stepchildren or something of the county in that so much happens in Ukiah. It's all centralized in Ukiah um, and that you know, we get left out of a lot of things. We don't know what's going on. Um, you know, we don't find out about things until after they've happened. So a Food Policy Council is, is a way of keeping the information flowing and bringing in the different sectors that are involved in the food system from, you know, the nonprofits that are involved, like North Coast Opportunities and the Noyo Food Forest, to, um, you know, like grocers and people who are involved in purchasing food and producers who are you know, the ones that are growing the food for us and the farmer's market managers and those that are involved in those levels. And it's about bringing us all together and seeing how can we work together because, you know, when we're working together, we're going to be a lot more effective. So that's basically the idea of the Food Policy Council. And we got started in Mendocino County, I guess, two or three years ago. And it was something that we developed through the um, Mendocino County Board of Supervisors. So we're actually like a committee of the county of Mendocino. And we've been endorsed from the, the government of County of Mendocino and then also signed on by the different cities within the County of Mendocino. So we have some, you know, kind of ad advisory position within the county to help promote policy and um, advocate for development of our local food economy and local food system. So that's, that's what the Food Policy Council is all about. Well, it seems like that organization will help everybody with the organization and um, <clears throat> passing on the information so we can be working all together. The beautiful Mendocino Coast, a place for rest, recovery, and well-being, inner calm and contentment, complete relaxation, heal chronic pain and disease, stretch your breath and your body, 
fun, laughter, and joy. Your body's natural cleansing, present in the moment, licensed professional therapists and healers. On the coast at Dragonfly Wellness Center, one mile south of Highway 20 on Highway 1. 707-962-0890. www.dragonflywellness.org. The California Retail Code requires food establishments to purchase food inputs from approved source. Mendocino County does not currently have a defined guidelines for growers and buyers in this regard, which hinders increased purchasing of local produce by schools, hospitals, and restaurants and other retail food establishments. Could you tell us about the, the guideline, the Mendocino Food Guideline meetings that you're organizing throughout the county, and who should attend these meetings? Sure. Well, this whole issue of approved source is one of those examples of things that, you know, I've gotten involved in through this job that I didn't necessarily realize was going to be part of my job description. <coughs> um, but, you know, in, in needing to figure out um, how to facilitate sales between local producers and buyers, I really need to learn about the laws and, and what's happening kind of on the broader scale um, throughout the nation and in the state around these, you know, direct farmer to buyer sales. And um, this issue of a pr approved source kept coming up because all of the restaurants, grocery stores, schools, hospitals, caterers, um, anybody who buys food from a farmer then does something to it and then resells it is considered a retail food establishment. Um, so, you know, a restaurant buys food from a distributor or from a mm -hmm. farmer and then they're cooking it and then they're reserving it. So they fall under this California retail food code. And within that is where this language is about needing to buy their food inputs from an approved source. And that's basically just ensuring, um, you know, consumer safety that the food that they're going to ultimately serve to you has come from, um, you know, a, a good place. <laughs> it wasn't mm -hmm. just, right. you know, picked mm -hmm. up behind the Safeway in the, yep. you know, in the green bin or something and then reserved to the mm -hmm. community. So, um, Throughout the retail code, it's very explicit about what that means in terms of dairy and meat and seafood and everything except for produce. And so mm -hmm. it says in the law that in the absence of state standards in that area, they leave it to the local municipalities and counties to determine what that means. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing across California now, because there's such a huge rise in these um, you know, direct sales from the farmer to the restaurant or the school, um, that you know, this issue of approved sources coming up in a lot of places. How do you know or how can you know, the schools know that the person that they're buying their food from is considered an approved source. And there's a lot of different, I mean, I could talk about this for a while, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> probably bore you half to death. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's really created um, an issue for us because, you know, the schools in particular and the hospitals need to know that the food is safe that they're buying. Right. And, um, you know, most, almost all of our producers are using, you know, just common sense food safety practices on the farm. But there's no real way of verifying that or certifying that. And mm -hmm. so that's what this whole process is about, is determining some way for the county of Mendocino to say to Joe Farmer, yes, you are an approved source because you are following a certain set of, you know, basic best management practices on your farm that ensure mm -hmm. that the food that you're growing is considered safe for, you know, to feed to children or to feed to elders or, you know, to sick people. And so that's what we are in the process now of developing. And so in my role as Farm to Fork Coordinator and as a member of the Food Policy Council, I've been working with the Department of Agriculture and our Agricultural Commissioner, it's Chuck Morse and the um, Division of Environmental Services, which is, you know, environmental health, and that's led by David Jensen. So I'm working with those two and another um, fellow Food Policy Council member, Cliff Pollan. The four of us are a committee that are leading this um, process in Mendocino County now. So that's what, um, we just had a series of meetings mm -hmm. to gather information in the county about, you know, what kinds of food safety practices are you already employing on your farms so that we can include those in the list of best management practices in this program? 
um, that ultimately will, will likely be an online self-certification form where you go in, you enter in some fields about your name, where you're growing food, you know, <coughs> checking off, yes, I'm adhering to these practices. Um, and it's basically like an online affidavit. Um, and so that's what this is all about. Now, I know you're having meetings around the county, but what if someone missed those meetings? Is there a way for them to still give their input to your meetings or your, um, your organization? And if so, how would someone be able to contact you or that organization to give their input or if they want to find out more about it? Yeah, well, these are definitely public meetings, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, we have gathered the listening session notes, and we've been sending those out to the community. So, um, you know, people who are interested in learning about what happened at those meetings, um, I can get them the notes. Um, we do have a email address that's much too long to try and say it right now, um, but I can give my contact information. So anybody that wants to kind of get plugged into this, perhaps they're a producer or they're a buyer, um, then they should contact me and then I can get them plugged in with more information. And maybe we can put that on the website the, sure. once you get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you see for the future of the projects you're working, Farm to Fork or the Food Policy Council? What do you see in the mm -hmm. future for those group, the organizations and projects? Well, we still have a lot of work to do here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've definitely made a lot of progress over the last number of years. You know, I think back to my first years here in Mendocino County and, um, you know, we were talking about the need for, um, to improve our farmer's markets. And right now the sales are, you know, better than ever mm -hmm. at the farmer's markets. There's been a, a really nice surge in participation in those. We also identified the need for more farmers and more production, and we're definitely seeing those levels growing. And it's, it's really through all these coordinated efforts um, of people across the county who are really focusing in on this. Um, we also identified the need for more education around, um, you know, the importance of eating he fresh local produce, and we're definitely seeing an increased demand for that in the community. And so what I see is just a continued development of all these things, you know, mm -hmm. education with our kids, you know, in teaching them about the importance of eating fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, and knowing where your food comes from and mm -hmm. having some skills and how to grow it and then how to cook it and <coughs> prepare it. So mm -hmm. continuing those kinds of nutrition education programs across the county. Um, you know, we, we definitely need to continue to working on access to land so that people can, who want to farm, can farm. You know, that's one of our mm -hmm. biggest challenges here is the high cost of land throughout Mendocino County, yeah. particularly on the coast, but also you know inland. Mm -hmm. it, this is a wonderful place for growing food, but in order to get started, um, it's such a huge expense. And so coming up with creative ways to get people linked up with land is something that we need to continue working on. Um, and you know, creative projects like um, the Noyo Food Forest that utilize school district property to grow food for the school is one way of addressing that um, that access to land. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's meeting a social need and an economic need all at the same time. So, you know, developing other innovative approaches like that is um, is something that we need to continue to do here. And um, we also, I would say, the biggest lack that we have in our food system right now is um, some kind of coordinated distribution system. So what we have going on right now for any of the sales and in the farmers markets and everything, I mean, we've got farmers driving all up and down, all around this county mm -hmm. on a daily basis, delivering product. And um, it's really inefficient and, and really, um, you know, there's only so much food you can grow when you're needing to spend a lot of your time getting it to market. And so, you know, we need to find a way to be able to coordinate those deliveries and that ordering so that farmers can spend more time doing what they're really good at, which is growing food to feed the community. And the buyers are able to utilize their time more efficiently so that they can buy more local food. Because if you're a restaurateur and you're needing to source, you know, a lot of different kinds of items and you're needing to work with 10 different farmers to get your weekly order together, that's a lot of work. Whereas if there was one list to be able to order from those 10 farmers and to get one delivery 
and be able to support all those different farmers at one time through a coordinated system, um, that's really going to help us step it up to another level. So I think that's really where a lot of our energy is going now is in trying to figure out that distribution puzzle and how to bring the food together to one place and truck it around um, in a more efficient and effective way. So um, I see, you know, we've been writing a lot of grants that focus in on the distribution system, and that's where a lot of our energy is going to be going in the next year or so. Well, that's great. And uh, we're looking forward to that, and we hope you're successful because everyone will win on mm -hmm. the coast and inland. Mm -hmm. And uh, Earth Day is coming around the corner. It's coming up pretty soon. Uh, can you tell us what might be happening and some activities that people might be able to participate in this uh, coming weeks? Sure, where well, there's tons of stuff going on. Um, Earth Day is um, on April 20th, and so there are a slew of events happening all across the county, but a couple of them that are really noteworthy um, are, you know, I'm actually, I want to first plug the Noyo Food Forests um, Earth Day Festival, which is going to be the seventh annual Earth Day Festival here in Fort Bragg. It's going to be on April 27th. Mm -hmm. So it's actually falling on the last Saturday of April. And it's going to be on that last Saturday of April every year <coughs> from here on out. So um, anybody that's watching this and is planning events in coming years, please remember that Noya Food Forest Earth Day Festival is always going to be on the last Saturday of April. Um, and so most of the other Earth Day Festival or Earth Day events that are happening in the county are happening on the 20th, which is the actual Earth Day. Um, and there is a great um, thing happening at the Solar Living Center over in Hopland. Um, they are having a CSA fair. It's mm. going to be um, showcasing all the different community-supported agriculture programs that happen throughout Mendocino County. And are you familiar with what a CSA no, is? No, I was just going to ask you, what is, what is a CSA? So a CSA is a really um, very innovative approach to um, community-based farming. And basically what it is, is, um, you know, at the beginning of a season, that's really when a farmer needs <coughs> the most financial support because that's when all of your costs come in. That's when you're buying your seed and your fertilizers and your drip irrigation and all of the inputs that go into then growing the food through the season. And you don't actually see the food mm -hmm. for another couple of months. <coughs> and so there's this time period there that's, a really sketchy time for farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and so in a CSA model, the way that it works is basically that the, the buyers of the food become more like members or partners in the farming operation. And CSA stands for? Community Supported Agriculture. Okay, thank you. So at the beginning <coughs> of the season, the farmer goes out and finds people who want to be a part of the farm for that year. And what they do is that they pay a share. Um, so they pay a membership fee, essentially, at the beginning of the year. That, uh, so it's up front. And then throughout the year, they receive a share of the harvest. Mm -hmm. And so you know, at the beginning of the year, let's say you pay you know, $500 at the beginning of the season to then get a basket of produce every week for the entire growing season. And depending on how many members there are, that's how the, the harvest will then get mm -hmm. shared. So it's, um, it's really an interesting approach because it means that the members share in the risk of the farming operation because, you know, the farmer never knows. Like you might, um, you know, suddenly have a freeze at the end of May and lose all of your tomato starts and need to get started again you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and get planted again. And so um, it, in the, you know, traditional sense, the farmer would just have lost out on that. Whereas in this case, the, the sh members to share in that risk. So they're like, okay, well, we're not going to get tomatoes this year, but there's all this other stuff that we're still going to get. And so, you know, it, it takes the pressure off of the farmer and allows the farmer to really produce food and then it allows the eater to really share in the abundance of that harvest. So CSA is a really cool thing and, and we're lucky here in Mendocino County to have one of the original CSAs um, in all of the country. We have pioneers in Live Power Community Farm which is in Covalo mm -hmm. and it was started in the 80s by um, 
Stephen and Gloria Decatur, who are known internationally for their work at Live Power Farm, and they're right here in Mendocino County in Covalo, and they've been running a CSA there for almost 30 years, which is really cool, and they're fantastic, and I'm a member this year, which I'm really excited about. So to bring this back around, there is a CSA fair mm -hmm. at the Solar Living Center in Hopland on the 20th. Mm -hmm. There's also an event at Parducci Wine Cellars. I'm not sure about all of the things that are happening there. There's something at Fry Vineyards, um, a farm to table dinner there. There's cleanups happening on the coast on that day. I mean, there's a million things, but the one that I really want to talk about is the seventh annual Noyo Food Forest Earth Day Festival, which is mm -hmm. on April 27th, mm -hmm. Saturday, April 27th, from 12 to 5 at the Learning Garden at Fort Bragg High School. Um, that is the Noya Food Forest's main project here in Fort Bragg. It's the on-site farm-to-school program at Fort Bragg High School. So food is grown at the garden for the cafeterias um, for Fort Bragg schools. And this year at the Earth Day Festival, it's going to be the ribbon cutting for a new part of the garden. That's the Garden Within Reach. And this is an all access garden for um, the folks in our community who have physical challenges like elders and folks with physical, physical disabilities and people that are in wheelchairs in order to create a space where everyone can get into the garden. And so um, at 12 noon on that day, we'll be um, dedicating the new Garden Within Reach, which is being built right now. And I was just over there a little while ago. It's really exciting. I'm super stoked to see the garden um, be revealed to the community. And um, there's going to be all kinds of things happening throughout the day. There's a big plant sale so you can get your summer garden started. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, you know, pedal-powered smoothies, which are a big hit. Kids' activities throughout the day. There's a whole series of sustainable living workshops with all kinds of great things from how to make your own compost to um, creating cheese and I mean I don't even there was a great list of workshops that are all available on the Noyo Food Forest website which is um, www.noyofoodforest.org and um, things will be happening all throughout the day it's really fun there's live performances I'll be dancing with my West African dance troupe, group Kindia. Mm -hmm. um, we do traditional dance from Guinea, West Africa. Um, so there's things like that, and then there's um, you know great food and kids' activities. There's going to be baby goats. I mean, it's just a really fun day. So um, that's on April 27th, great. and it's free. So there's no reason not to go. Well, the price is right, and it sounds like there's a lot of things happening, and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully some of our audience will be able to take a partake in that. Now you just gave the uh, the website for the Noyo Food Force so if someone wanted to contact you would they find your email there or would they uh, go to NCO or or the... Probably the best way to get in touch with me is to call me um, and so my number is 707-467-3238 um, my contact information is also available through the Gardens Project website. Gardens Project is a program of North Coast Opportunities that I work very closely with mm -hmm. um, and so my information is available on there as well. So, And I can be reached through Noya Food Forest because I'm on the board of directors of Noya Food Forest so it's pretty easy to find me. Great. Susan Lightfoot, I'm yeah, unfortunately very much all over the internet at this point so it's kind of easy to find me. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming here and sharing your expertise. We're, we're just so excited to have you here and uh, and I'm glad to find out all the things that are happening and all the things you're doing, and everybody's going to benefit from all the work you're doing. Thank you. Okay, this is Keith Liner signing off from Mendocino, Nat Naturally Mendocino, hoping you had a, a good time watching the show, and maybe I'll get a chance to participate in some of the activities and programs that are happening that were mentioned here today, and uh, maybe we'll see you there. Thank you. The beautiful Mendocino Coast. A place for rest, recovery, and well-being, inner calm and contentment, complete relaxation, heal chronic pain and disease, stretch your breath and your body, fun, laughter, and joy, your body's natural cleansing, present in the moment, licensed professional therapists and healers, on the coast at Dragonfly Wellness Center, one mile south of Highway 20 on Highway 1. 707-962-0890 www.dragonflywellness.org This is part of the program where we're going to talk about some of the events happening around the county. This is the April calendar of events. 
on April 17th, early bird walks for the Mendocino Coast Botanical Gardens will happen at 8.30 a.m., the third Wednesday of the month. It's free with admission to the Botanical Gardens. On April 20th, Noyo Food Forest Learning Gardens will have a pre-Earth Day cleanup. Activities start at 9 a.m. till noon, 300 Dana Street in Fort Bragg. On April 20th, Standish Hickey Campground will have a cleanup from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Highway 101, 1 1.5 miles north of Leggett, California. Advanced registration is required. Phone 213-542-2450, Phoebe Oheim. On April 27th, Earth Day at McCarricker Glass Beach. Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 till noon, Glass Beach will be meeting at the west end of Elm Street in Fort Bragg. Trash bags will be provided. For more information, contact Fred Andrews at 961-0471. On April 27th, Noyo Food Forest Learning Garden will have their 7th annual Earth Day activities from noon to 5 p.m., 300 Dana Street, Fort Bragg. Thank you for joining us. My name is Keith Weiner, and see you at the beaches.